Hey guys, welcome back. I know it's been some time since I posted, but there were a lot of things that I needed to take care of. Now that everything is taken care of, back on the horse and let's get this done. So today I wanted to go into a very important topic, which is what we look for when we hire photographers. This could also apply to assistants, you know, lead shooters, second shooters, whatever the case may be, but we generally are not looking for just assistance when we hire. We want to hire people that want to shoot, people that are photographers, people that want to take this to the next level, whether it's with us or by themselves or a mixture of both. That's what we want. So hopefully this video is helpful both for photographers who are looking to hire other photographers. If, you're, if your business is growing and things are good and you're bringing people on, what do we look for? And on the other side of the coin, if you're looking to work for other photographers, what are those potential people that are hiring you looking for when you meet with them. So we narrowed it down to eight. We could have gone a lot more. And I always try to make a shorter list, but here are some of the things that I personally look for. I would say for me, the biggest thing is team mentality. If you don't have a team mentality, if you think that this person coming in is going to take your job or everybody is out for themselves, 100%, you're not going to be joining our team. I don't want somebody that comes in and thinks that it's about them or that they have some sort of they have some sort of competitive nature in a negative way if the competitive nature is i want to see if i can do a better version of this photo because i want to elevate the team i'm all for that when one of our second photographers turns lead and then they go and shoot at venues that we've shot at before and they do a better version of what i've done I, honestly it couldn't make me any happier because what that means is that now we can send them out to go and lead shoot and I have the full confidence that they're going to knock it out of the park just as much as I would or just as much as Derek would or just you see what I'm saying. So people are everybody's becoming stronger and it just makes it easier to book out multiple jobs in one day. So having that team mentality coming in and, and going, I'm here as one part of a big unit that's what's going to make the team stronger when people come in and i can sniff it from a mile away that they're here for themselves and themselves then themselves only it's not going to work it's as simple as that and that's why we always start everybody out assisting if i can see when you're assisting that this job is below you or at least that's how you feel out you go i don't have time for that because i always look at it like would i give this person work over Derek over Jeff over John Chris. And if the answer is a very clear resounding no, then why would I keep them around compared to your winners in your crew and go with these people? Are they there as far as their mentality or can I see them being there in their mentality? If the answer is yes, keep them, work with them and shape them into the best photographer that they can be. If it's not, and you can see that there's going to be a lot of resistance, move on. And that goes with number two, which is work ethic. I can't stress this enough. I want somebody that comes in and there's no job that's below them. The reason I say this is because if I, on those rare occurrences where I'll lead shoot for Sergio or I'll, I haven't second shot in forever, but if I second shoot, hey, what style do you like? What type of photos? Show me what you like and I'm going to go out there and get it for you. Do you want to move this couch? I'll help you out. If the lead photographer is setting something up, me and the assistant will grab that couch and move it out of the way. That's what you want to be doing when, when I'm talking about work ethic. You don't want to have people who feel like a certain task is below them. It, it, that is just, it's like a mold on bread. If you bring you know, something negative, it's going to spread throughout the team. So you got to be really, really attentive to who you have on your team. And that goes also with the next thing, which is willingness to learn. If you're coming in and you think that you know everything, what the hell do you need to come to us for then? If you know everything, go off, go off and do it on your own. And I've had people like that who have tried out for us and I felt like they, they know everything. So if you know everything, why are you calling us? Go, go and do it on your own because I'm not going to sit here and argue with somebody over things that we've tried. I've been shooting for 16 years. 17th. Damn, I'm getting old. So, <laughs> so at the end of the day, I'm not trying to fight you. We've tried 30 different ways of doing the same thing. And if we found like the top two really work, but you're trying to fight us and the way that we've tried and it didn't work, that that's a better way. I'm not here to argue with you. Go and do it on your own and have fun with that. But I want people who I'll, I, and the thing is, is I'll never tell you just do it because I said so. I'll always give you a story and I'll explain to you, well, back when I was in New York and we tried this and that didn't work because of this, I'll explain it to you. But if it's not a huge deal, you can still try it. 
try it out and, and then like shooting with two cameras, for example. I'm not a huge fan of it. And I, almost everybody on our team has tried it and they've gotten out of it. But I always say try it. Like that's one of those things where I'm like, try it out if you want. I personally don't find the benefit in it. And then everybody that's tried it has tried it and then gone back. So try it out. But there are other things where I'm like, no, like this is how we do things because we know that it's the most efficient. So making sure that you have people that are willing to learn, that's a huge, huge plus when looking to um, when looking to hire photographers to work with your team. Going off of that, also low ego, and I put low ego, not no ego, because I do want you to have enough confidence to go, yes, I can shoot the hell out of this. Because if you don't have that, there needs to be controlled ego where you feel like you can handle a situation and you're not going to buckle under pressure. But at the same time, understand that you're not always right. Hell, I'm not always right. And I'm the leader of the team. I know that there are certain times where I went, damn, I could have done this better. And then I'll tell it to the team. I'll say, hey, guys, during this situation, I did something and I think it could have been better if we did X, Y, and Z. So I just want to share this with you guys. So if you go out and shoot, apply this. Don't make my, learn from my mistakes. Don't learn. I think there's a saying that goes, a smart person learns from their mistakes. A genius learns from other people's mistakes. Hi, Tiny. <laughs> Sweet girl. All right. We have a little cameo. But yeah, that's uh, have a little bit of ego, enough to have confidence, but not so much that it ends up working against you. Um, that's And that's what I'm looking for when, when somebody comes in. Have that confidence. I need you to have confidence. And then we're gonna give you enough tools to have competence behind that. And this one, God damn, I don't wanna curse. And, and this one, this is a big one. Uh, social intelligence, reading the room. It, I don't know what's been going on in the world, but I feel like I'll go out. I don't go out every day. I go to the gym, that's about it. But I'll go out and I'll see a situation where I go, is, is anybody seeing this? Like, what the hell is going? Like, I feel like there's so many people that don't know how to read a room. And that is so important. Tiny girl, you're causing a shadow, my girl. Hi, baby. Okay. And that is so important, in especially when you're dealing with weddings or engagements or maternities. Maternity, for example. If you're shooting and you are smart enough to see that she's getting tired, We've been shooting for 45, 50 minutes and she's exhausted. She looks a little hungry. If you got in 45 minutes, if you haven't gotten a, a decent amount of good shots, just hang up the gloves now because you should, <laughs> you should have some, some hot fire within that time frame. If you're shooting a wedding and you see that, you know, you've done portraits, you've done families, you've done the ceremony and they look exhausted. They, they're almost in a bad mood. And I've seen this. I'll go, hey, go and grab something to eat. Go to the bridal suite. Get some food, grab a drink, relax, and we're going to set up the next shot. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to send my assistant to come and grab you, and then we're going to continue shooting with a few more frames before they open the doors. And I'll tell you, I can see the relief come over them, and they just go, all right, thank you. We're, we're going to go over there. Let us know when you need us. And are those 10 minutes really going to make or break the entire day as far as the photography goes? Absolutely not. But those 10 minutes, I'll bet you that they'll remember that they had a moment to breathe and eat something and relax a little bit before they go right back into the reception and back into working. So reading the room, having social intelligence, that is huge. If you see somebody that knows how to read the room and they're trying to work for you, keep that person. Derek, Jeff, Joseph, Sergio, I mean, all Caitlin, all these people that I, I see, I can tell they know how to read a room and they understand people because we are in a people business. So that's extremely important. Keep those people who pay attention and know how to read a room. And then the last thing I already touched on in a little bit is confidence. Is if I'm looking to hire somebody, I want them to have confidence. I want them to, to know that if, let's say, for example, I hired Nathan a few years ago and I told him from the very beginning, by the time you're teaching the next person how to do the post-production, how to do the editing, more than likely you're going to be doing a lot more shooting. You're going to be doing a lot more other things instead of sitting at a desk editing. Of course, you can edit for as long as you want. I'm never going to tell you there's no more for you. No, like as, as long as you want to edit, I'll give you work to edit. However, if you don't want to edit, 
teach the next person because they're not necessarily they're not taking your job. If you're teaching the next person coming in, that means that you're going to be moving to the next phase. So Sergio, actually, that's another really good example. When he came in, he was doing editing. He was doing second shooting. He was doing lead shooting. Now, mainly all he does is video on his own. He doesn't do any post-production for us. He rarely lead shoots for us because at this point I refer a lot of video work to him and we always work together. So when he came in, he started teaching Derek. He started teaching Jesus. He started teaching basically everybody that came behind him because Sergio was one of the, the original TNK photo team members. When I tell you hire people who have confidence, Sergio was confident enough that, hey, in three, four years, I'm not going to be in this same position. So why would I want to hold on to that position? Instead, why don't I teach the next person coming in how to be the best assistant, how to be the best second shooter? So then when I'm out of there, the lead photographer, and at the time it was only me lead, Elmer's life is going to be easier. So that was almost him paying me back for teaching him what whatever I've taught him. And that's the kind of mentality that you want from the people that you hire is I'm going to keep growing. So teaching the person that's coming behind me isn't going to hinder my growth in any sort of way. If anything, it helps me because now instead of putting somebody to assist, I'm going to put them to second shoot since we already have another assistant. If I'm short an assistant, now I'm going to put that second shooter to assist. So it really hinders your growth by hindering other people's growth. So I hope this video was helpful. It's something, you know, a few notes that, that I wrote down and I wanted to share with you guys. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. I also posted an AMA on Instagram, so ask me anything. Leave a comment below because I'll answer some of these on the next video as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll be posting next week, I promise.